Knight Marion is my favourite character in the Five Nights at Freddy's series. It's an entity with so much meaning, another presence like we've never seen before. And to put it simply, it has a design that is undeniably terrifying. Today I'd like to tell you why I am so invested in one of FNAF's criminally underutilised characters and even potential theories that could tell us more of what's going on in Security Breach and the upcoming Ruin DLC. I would like to thank Springs firstly for actually giving me the idea to make this video, as well as sharing their thoughts on Nightmare On with me too, some of which I'll be showing in this video. And also, this is technically my first video essay, so let me know if you enjoy it, and if I did well for a first time. <laughs> On October 23rd, 2015, exactly a week before FNAF 4's Halloween DLC, scottgames.com was updated with this image. Titled Don't Wake the Baby.jpg, this image seemed like a regular picture of the Freddy plush from on top of the FNAF 4 bed at first, but then fans found it concealed a big secret. What's going on, guys? Dorco back again. I hope you are fantastic today, and welcome back to another Five Nights at Freddy's for Halloween teaser. And oh my god, I am so excited, guys. You may be wondering, oh, it's just a Freddy plushie, that's all. When you save the picture, for some strange reason, it says, Don't wake the baby. Which is the most interesting thing I've ever heard of. A baby? What the hell is going on? But we know the Freddy plushie to belong in the bed. In the bedroom in Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Which it is indeed. When you brighten up the image, you see it on the bed. However, the more and more you brighten up the picture, you see something on the bed. And who is it? It's the freaking puppet! Yes! Finally! The puppet is in Five Nights at Freddy's 4. If you brighten up the picture so, so, so much, you do see something what looks to be the puppet. I think it's the puppet anyway. Hidden in the surrounding darkness was a looming presence, watching, smiling, with a slim figure recognisable as a form of the puppet, this was the teaser that introduced Night Marion in all its horror. The file name, Don't Wake the Baby.jpg, was a reference to a Markiplier line aimed towards the puppet in his original FNAF 2 playthrough. I don't know what to do, they throw new stuff at me, which is really cool because it's the old stuff, and then Buddy comes back and he's got no face, and Tico's coming back and he's like, he's, he now has like three sets of teeth, I think I saw like maybe three or four sets of teeth. I don't even know, care about the baby anymore. Goddamn, I don't care about waking up the baby, let all the little baby blushy sleep, a nice sleepy sleep. Think I'm ready for this? I ain't ready for this, I don't want to wake the baby, yes! For this reason, I believe it's safe to say that this does not have lore implications. But that's completely fine knowing this is just the tip of the iceberg in the debut of Night Marion. The image separated from its file name was enough to induce speculation, however. When fans brightened the image, not only did the nightmare puppet form come into view, but Freddy also appeared to light up into a golden colour. Theorists used this as evidence that the puppet is the one who talked to the crying child through the Fredbear plush saying, I will put you back together. And this actually developed over time. It's a theory that I feel a lot of people dismiss because they feel someone else might fit better. And there's two reasons I say this. The first is that for Pizzeria Simulator, we got this teaser, which connects back to what we've already seen. It's just a Freddy plush. But over time, if you go back to the website and brighten the image, you'll start to see strings appear over Freddy. Strings of the puppet. And the second reason I think this is a valid theory is because of the next topic I'd like to move on to. The main law of the puppet, as you may already know, is that the security puppet, built to protect children with green wristbands, was unable to save Charlotte from Afton outside the location of Take Cake to the Children, 
In turn, this led to Charlotte possessing the puppet, giving its signature tear streams and from there she gave life to the other victims. Lefty was eventually created to contain the puppet so Charlotte could be freed and have her happiest day, and now the puppet resides in the blob with no possessed child and no tear streaks. But supposedly there is a lot more to it than that. Look at the security puppet's eyes and you'll see two pinpricks of light. And when you really look into the series of FNAF as a whole, these two eyes have been everywhere. They've been in FNAF World, which connects back to Fredbear's line of I will put you back together. In fact, the Fredbear plush itself has these eyes. The puppet's original FNAF 2 jump scare has two white dots, also not forgetting the way it stares into your soul in the cutscenes, and how Phantom Puppet does the exact same thing. And these two dots can even be connected loosely to the front cover of Blackbird, a story inspired by Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, about a person being haunted by a supernatural bird in the grief of another. And that all brings us back around to Night Marion. Night Marion in FNAF 4's Halloween DLC could have been the perfect addition to include in the game. Everything in FNAF 4 up to that point was big and bulky, animatronics that tower over you with multiple sharp sets of teeth, withering desaturated bodies and glowing eyes full of dread. But Night Marion was different in every aspect, a slim black body made with intertwining tubes, a skeletal shadowed ribcage high up its torso, long serpentine tentacle-esque hands and a familiar yet terrifying face of a puppet. The way this animatronic contrasts with the rest of the crew in the game is beautifully well done, increasing the fear factor and really putting its importance on display. The entire face and body is monochromatic, just painted with blacks and whites, just like how dead children are presented in this franchise. And the best detail, the creepiest detail of it all, can be seen in its petrifying jump scare. It sneaks up towards your door, and without any messing about, shows this frame with the following sound. That sound is also used for Nightmare's jump scare. But if you brighten this frame, you'll see this. It's a frightening detail. It's another instance of chilling secrets being hidden in plain sight. The simplicity of this jump scare catches you out. It's not what you expect. It's a jump scare that then takes you straight back to the main menu screen. It's the last thing you see before you die. In fact, I'd like to speculate that Night Marion is the Grim Reaper of this franchise. It is how death is portrayed. Black and white. Simple. Screams of nightmares. It's a beautiful, yet terrifying defeat. The next time we see Night Marion is in Ultimate Custom Night, which we know to be William Afton's Purgatory. In FNAF 4, there was a bit of a controversy over the fact that in the Halloween DLC, Night Marion was one of the animatronics that was explicitly told to not be canon. However, Ultimate Custom Night's reintroduction of the character appears to override that, and I'm so glad they brought it back. Night Marion's mechanic in Ultimate Custom Night reads as the following. Don't let your mouse cursor linger over Night Marion for too long. Night Marion can appear in four different places on the screen, and there's something about these stances that just kills me to the core. It's another stare with a huge gaping smile. In the original teaser, it stares into the distance, but here, it is right in front of you. Death is right in front of you, always watching you with those big, deep eyes. And it's absolutely perfect that Night Marion is the one taking the foreground in a situation. It fits the criteria for all three things that tie together Afton's story in Ultimate Custom Night. It's a nightmare, it's a reflection of death, and it's a vengeful creation, all three of which are brought up in the death voice lines. The 
Room 1280 outright confirmed this was all just a nightmare within Afton's brain, with something, presumably the one you should not have killed, keeping him alive. Let Teddy's death again and again and again. This time, death cannot save you. In Afton's supposed quest researching immortality and the effects of living metal, he's discovered that in most cases, death does actually save him. But this time, he's not in control of what's happening. I am the fearful reflection of what you have created. This line stands out to me and honestly, of all the death voice lines in Ultimate Custom Night, this one has to be up there as one of the most beautiful ones. This is what Nightmarion is, a reflection, death looking right at him, taking a fearful, recognisable form and standing right there in his nightmare, watching with those dark yet ever so meaningful eyes. Help Wanted is of course the next time we see Nightmare on. We see its head in the Builder Mangle minigame, which is very interesting when you think about how that room exists in the actual Mega Pizzaplex. Nightmare on is always watching, but the main minigame we see it in is in Night Terrors Night 2. Night Terrors is a spin on the original FNAF 4 formula, and I must say, especially so with Nightmare on, this was the perfect way to expand on fear and utilise its design perfectly. The minigame consists of you looking primarily for its slithering black and white tentacles that randomly appear from the cupboard, under the bed, and the strange hole in the ceiling. Why is there water? Oh, it's underneath? Up the top? No! No, I can't be doing this. I, I definitely cannot be doing this one. The flashlight's running out! Huh? I'm too scared. I'm frozen to the spot. I'm gonna die. I cannot get over how amazing of a development this was to Nightmare On's character. It means that not only is its design super original, its mechanics are fresh and horrifying. The one place I do actually really like the use of Nightmare On is in the recent fan game that I played on the channel called The Glitched Attraction. The tentacles would slither around, out the hole above the bed, and you had to hide in the Golden Freddy suit before it comes out and jump scares you. There's something so malevolent, frightening, and yet so meaningful about the tentacles that you see that makes Nightmare On's levels extremely creepy. I think it's the fact that it's not the full body. What you see is simply evidence of Nightmare On's existence, and it brings upon the knowledge that it's always present somewhere, and it could be behind you at any given moment. Even though the face of Nightmare On is terrifying by itself, the creature with no face is equally as effective. Speaking of the face, let's talk about something that Springs actually made me aware of the other day. If you look at the model for Nightmare On, this is actually what it looks like. Take away the mask, and he is just a black blob. And that to me is super interesting. He's just an entity, a symbolism stand-in for death. In the books, we are actually told a lot about the connotations of the colour black in the series. Things that come to mind are the black goo in Kids at Play, the strange ritual at the start of Step Closer, the black closet markings from after the events of the real Jake, and there's also a story coming up in Submechanophobia which may be connected to all that too. But there is one connection I just have to draw, and that is the victims of the Stitch Wraith. Apparently the people of the Stitch Wraith kill bleed black down the sides of their face, almost like tear streams. Why do they do this in the story? Because it's a direct effect of exposure to agony. So when you think about it, what is the Nightmare on Entity? Nobody really knows. But to put it simply, it's a reflection of death. It's your worst nightmare and it's probably an agony based creation. It's slithering black tentacles with familiar white stripes are powered by your fear. And the more scared of death you are, the quicker it will come. And here is where everything gets super interesting and all comes together quite nicely. 
when these things were first shown in the flesh, everyone went berserk. They were very clearly scrapped staff bots, which had been painted with black ink to look like Nightmare On. Their arms have black stripes, a mouth had been painted on with one set of small teeth. They bleed black ink down the sides of their face, and unlike the regular staff bots, their eyes glow two pinpricks of light. You'll find that in the sewer area and in the poster note room, they are always there in one way or another, always watching. And not only all of that, but on their torso you'll find the following three words in your dreams. The sound of their jump scare also contains the jump scare from FNAF 4. Theories can be made to try to piece together what's going on here with the Nightmare on staff bot cult, but if there was ever going to be a way to make the staff bots even at all unnerving, this was the way to do it. This entire area in security breaches is downright unsettling, and is never at all explained. But it feels like the staff bots that were supposed to be dead have been revived and reused, somewhat like Afton's whole story, and that's probably the reason why Nightmare on is present here. Whether that's the reason or not, it just shakes me that the incarnation of death is just always there watching your every move. It feels scary to have a higher power looking down over you with a smiling gaze. And so of course, that leads me into the final small topic of this video. And that is the fact that there are Nightmare on plushies that are watching your every move. You've probably seen people point this out in theory videos before, but if you haven't, allow me to explain. Throughout Security Breach, you can actually find various Nightmare On plushies scattered around various rooms. There's one hiding on top of a floating Freddy in the west airlock of Rockstar Row. There's one in the golf ball ride outside Monty Golf. There's another in the office of the West Arcade. And there's one on a huge stack of boxes in Bonnie Bowl. When you find a collectible one in the Endo Warehouse, it is actually named Nightmare Plush. It's possible that canonically, Nightmare On is now Nightmare, the representation, or the reflection if you will, of nightmares and death. Once again, always watching. And just like the Fredbear Plush in FNAF 4, he's here, he's there, he's everywhere. Always watching with those two pinpricks of light, two eyes that you never want to look too deep into. And so that's a pretty brief explanation of what I think about Nightmare On. It's an entity with a uniquely slim, black, slithering body that represents death. The puppet gives life, and the Nightmare Puppet makes sure you never get it. It is always present. It could be behind you right now, hidden behind some boxes, or watching from above with its deep gaze. This is a character that I think has a lot of lore relevance and story to it, but has still been severely underused. And so I leave this video behind, hoping that in the future of the series we will get to see it again, maybe even face it one on one. After all, death is inevitable. And with the gloomy environment we hear is coming up in the ruined DLC for Security Breach, I think this is a perfect place for Nightmare On to fit back in. So tell me what you think of the Nightmare On entity in the comments below. Let me know if you'd like me to do more video essays in the future, and as always, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out. Sweet dreams.